When installing an aftermarket car audio system, we're oftentimes going to need to run new speaker wire to both existing and new speaker locations. But what does this process look like and what tips do I have for you? I'm currently working on installing an active three-way component speaker set along with rear coaxial speakers into this truck, which will be powered by an eight-channel amplifier. Hey everybody, I'm Mark. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. Join me as we continue our installation in this step of our build log series. Really quick, a thank you to our sponsor for this episode, New Concepts. In this video, I'll be using the New Concepts Karma speaker wire. Don't let the appearance fool you, this is in fact oxygen-free copper wire, but it has been tinned to prevent the wire from oxidizing over time. Great for marine applications as well. This wire comes in 8 gauge, 10 gauge, 12 gauge, 14 gauge, and 16 gauge so that you can match the wire throughout a build for both speakers and subwoofers. When you need power wire, wire distribution, speaker wire, signal wire, any different kind of wire for your next car audio build, definitely be sure to check out New Concepts. You can learn more at the link down in the video description. First things first here, I want to access our amplifier rack. So I'm going to remove our existing subwoofer enclosure. If you guys didn't see this before on the channel this has four 10 inch subwoofers down firing inside of it but i've since done a seat lift which will give me some more room for the 313s that we're planning on doing you can see it gives me about this much more space for our next enclosure but nevertheless we're going to get that out of the way and we're also going to remove this rear seat so that i can fully easily access the amplifier rack. Yeah, I want to bring you guys up to speed because this is kind of a non-standard install being as we're using a lot of the wiring from the previous build that was in here. In that previous build, we used this same subwoofer amplifier. We used all of this same amplifier power wiring and this fuse distribution block. What's new is instead of two two-channel amplifiers, I have an eight-channel DSP built-in amplifier here instead of a separate DSP that used to be over here. So DSP built into this eight-channel amp. The subwoofer amp is the same. So we do have some existing speaker wiring because I had four channels of speaker power previously. So I've left that there. We can reuse that. I also have the signal from the front of the vehicle from the aftermarket head unit. This is going to send front and rear, left and right, Right signal into the DSP amplifier. We also have a remote turn on lead here that used to be tucked underneath the wiring. I pulled it out just so I could show you guys. That's turning on our relay block there that can also be used to turn on a full separate circuit for LED lights, fans, those sort of things that's on this smaller fuse block. And I also have this wire here. This used to be for the controller for the separate DSP. I'm going to need to run a new one because it's a different model here going with the JL Audio VXI amplifier. Now, before I start making my speaker wire connections to the speaker wire harness of the amplifier, I do need to run the four additional channels of wires. We only have four so far. We need to add the additional four. So I'm going to remove all of these side panels for easy access up to the front of the vehicle. Now, while we're pulling all of these side panels off, I think it's always a good idea to just grab the shop vac and clean up some of the extra little dirt that seems to always make its way down into this channel. You're doing all the work to remove all these panels, so you might as well spend that little bit of extra time to make the car nice and clean. So I'm currently on the passenger side of the vehicle. You can see I've got all of the panels removed here. And off camera, I also removed this wire here that went to the DSP controller. Also in the back here, all the panels are removed, again, still on the passenger side, but also all the panels removed on the driver's side as well. So we have lots of flexibility now for running all of this additional wiring. The reason I'm even spending the time pointing this out to you guys is I know sometimes people like to try to just tuck things underneath the panels. Just spend the extra little bit of time to completely remove all of these panels so that you can really lay the wiring in here nice and clean. I need to to access behind our aftermarket head unit next so I'm going to be removing the two bolts up there this will pop out this will pop out I'll be able to get all of the brain of the head unit removed if you guys want to see more details on how I installed the aftermarket head unit be sure to check out the related video you'll also notice that I've removed the custom a pillars out of the vehicle on both sides and that's because in the previous video, I was just doing a test fitment on these. I do need to actually connect the wiring for the speakers. 
Now that the head unit is removed, we can obviously access some of the wiring behind here. Now I had these RCA wires in here previously, and you can see that they are color coded, but I also used my label maker to add some numbers on them there. That way I just don't get confused about the order of the colors. So we've got channel one, two, three, and four. And what's unique about this RCA cable from our show sponsored New Concepts is you can see that it has four channels of RCA in one cable. This is obviously handy as we run to the back of the vehicle here where we can make a connection to our DSP amplifier. This amplifier is a little bit different. You can see it has this pigtail that comes off of it for the RCA wire connections, but you can see I've got them connected there and I want to protect this connection. So I have a piece of heat shrink that I'm going to slide over each of these like so, and I'm going to heat that up and shrink it down. Since the wiring harness here out of the head unit also has pigtails, we want to make these same connections and protect them with the heat shrink as well. So these are now good to go. Ignore my loose routing for the time being. I'm going to secure everything in place once I get all of the different wires ran. Now after I got those RCA connections heat shrunk and protected, I've turned my attention to mounting the controller for the DSP amplifier. This is JL Audio's DRC-205 controller. It's a dual rotary controller, meaning it has a knob that allows us to control the subwoofer independently from the total volume control, or we can set it up to do different things in software. And it also allows us to click it and change the tuning preset that we are using. Now, if you've been following along with the project, we have a set of rear coaxials in the rear doors and a six and a half inch component woofer in the front doors. For the time being, the factory speaker wiring is more than capable of handling the amount of power that we'll be sending to these drivers. So for right now, we're not going to be modifying this harness plug or trying to run any aftermarket wiring through it. But just for the sake of interest here, I did open this up and I do see that there is some available room up at the top if I did want to modify this plug and run some aftermarket speaker wiring into the door. So perhaps a future upgrade if we do decide to use some more powerful mid-base drivers or bridge those channels and send this driver more power. So instead, what we're going to do to tap into that existing speaker wiring is we're going to use what we know is the available connection out of the aftermarket head unit. We know that the head unit had front left, front right, rear left, and rear right that goes to each of those door locations. So what I did when I was installing this head unit is I used a plug here to make those speaker wire connections, knowing full well that I could just unplug this so we're no longer using the power out of the aftermarket head unit. And instead, we're going to connect new speaker wiring that we're going to run up to the front here, and we're going to connect it to one of these male plugs, which we'll plug in right here to tap into that factory vehicle wiring. I'll be reusing the existing speaker wire out of the vehicle. I've pulled this out. I know that it's long enough to make it from our amplifier rack location to that front plug location. And I'm going to be connecting each of these wires to this harness here, which plugs into the DSP amplifier. I make each of these connections by soldering and of course paying attention to making sure that I'm connecting negative wires to negative and positive to positive. And if you'd like to learn more about my soldering station setup here, be sure to check out the related video. So here we have it guys, the speaker wire harness for the door speakers. Now I need to just get this wiring installed into the vehicle. So when I'm running multiple wires like this, I like to make sure that as I go, I'm not accidentally wrapping the wire around another wire. That way, if we do need to go to remove this, it's easy to do so. And it just keeps our wiring nice and clean. Another thing that I wanna make sure is as I'm pulling the wire, it's really easy to have it be taut like this if I were to pull it a little bit more up front. And the problem with that is if you go to put in this panel, obviously it's gonna then have to kind of stretch the wire. So as we go through, we wanna make sure that we really kind of push the wire down into each of these nooks and crannies and have plenty of extra length before we cut it up front. So here I am applying the second set of wires and this is what I'm talking about. It'd be easy to just push this down in here and be like, okay, that's good to go. But I want to straighten out this twist here. That way our wiring just lays together a lot more cleanly. And when we come back and attach all these wires together with zip ties in the channel, everything is going to be really nice and clean. All right, since I'm going to be cutting the wire to length at the front, I'm going to start from the back and work forward and tidy this up with zip ties. Another option is to wrap with Tessa tape. In this case, I'm going with zip ties. I like the idea that they are easier to undo if I need to modify this in the future. Here we have it, guys, all zip tied 
All the zip ties are trimmed and our speaker wire is super clean laid into that channel for those four door channels. A nice clean bundle going underneath the dash along this dash piece of plastic here over to the head unit. I've added all the speaker wires into this eight conductor plug here so now I can add the final insert to lock them in place so you can see that this replaces what came out of the aftermarket head unit like we talked about before and it's going to be able to just tuck back in here and plug together and send amplifier power through the factory speaker wiring. Since this is in the dash, I've also added some harnessing tape around it, just like everything else in the dash. I know this is kind of a jumbled mess as of right now, but once I actually go to tuck the radio in and make all the connections, I can kind of orient everything where it makes most sense. Now over here on the passenger side of the vehicle, I need to run the four wires that are going to be for the two tweeters and two mid ranges up in the A pillars of the vehicle. So we're gonna have those four speaker wires that need to go through here, but also on this side, I'm going to run this wire, which is for the DRC controller that connects to the DSP amplifier, and this wire, which is the remote turn on lead. In this case, I am using some cloth harnessing tape to secure the remote turn on lead to that DRC controller wire. In the meantime, I've also wired up the back side of our mid range and tweeter speaker here. And rather than using the female on both of these and the male on the wires in the vehicle, I did a female and a male to each of these different speakers. That way these wires can never potentially accidentally be switched and send mid-range frequencies to the tweeter. These have just enough extra wire that I can plug them into the plugs in the vehicle and install the A-pillar. Now before we cover up all of our wiring, there are a couple of quick tests that I wanna do just to make sure that everything is connected correctly. First, in my DSP software here, after I've done all of the signal routing, I want to make sure that if I mute all of these channels and then unmute them one by one, that the speaker is playing that I expect. For example, the back right door here should be channel H. And it's probably kind of hard to hear, but I have pink noise playing at a very low volume and I can identify that this is the correct channel. I can go through and unmute each of these one by one to verify. The other thing I wanna do is again, I have pink noise playing. You guys could hear it, it kind of sounds like static. Since I'm using four channels of output out of the aftermarket head unit for front left, front right, rear left, and rear right, I want to make sure that those are all connected properly. So I'm gonna turn up the pink noise. And if I go right here, should be my front left, which it is. This should be my front right, which it is. Rear right, which it is. And finally, rear left, which it is. So we are good to go on those. All the RCA wires are properly connected. With all those tests now complete, we can reinstall all the interior pieces back into the vehicle and our system is officially playing. So coming up next for the build, I need to get everything tuned. And although I'm gonna be running the existing subwoofer enclosure for the time being, we do need to also build our custom enclosure for our three JL Audio 13 TW5s. If you're new here, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget next time you need wiring for a car audio build, definitely be sure to check out our show sponsor, New Concepts, at the link down in the video description. A big thanks to them along with Jerry and the rest of the Patreon membership team for making these videos possible. And of course, thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching.